So I think we can start. So in this case, again, good evening, Yaksamlar, good abend, dear viewers. Today we welcome you to another lecture in our lecture series. My name is Sehar. I'm a student at the University of Freiburg and a member of Movement for Justice. And today I'm the host of today's lecture. Today's talk deals with the relevance of the Istanbul Convention. We at Movement for Justice look forward to your countless presence, of course. And I will give you a little bit words and some information about our organization. The Human Rights Association Movement for Justice was founded here in Freiburg over two years ago from an association of several people in order to protect the rights and protection of human rights worldwide. We show solidarity in our work with re representative I'm not a native speaking one. So like I said, we show solidarity in our work with representatives who stand up for uh, human rights, of course, worldwide. At this point, uh, we would like also to invite you to our monthly meetings. Um, you can join, you can participate in our organization, and also you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and see our work and follow everything. This year, we already, this year we have already given a series of lectures on the International Weeks Against Racism. During this week of lectures, we dealt with various events on the subject of racism. And today now are currently our current series of lectures deals with women's rights. The trigger for this series was Turkey's withdrawal from this agreement. Ironically, Turkey which was named as a signatory state after the agreement, left the convention, and on the 1st Jul uh, July, the law will take place, especially in a country where violence against women has recently increased in the last years and where you got in the last times so much news about femicides and violence. With that in mind, I greet Merve Ömeroğlu. She is a lawyer in Istanbul and specialized on women and children's rights. She will give us an important overview of the Istanbul Convention. She's also a member of our partner organization in Turkey, the so-called SHD, Sosyal Haklar Derneği. At this point, I would like to thank Merve warmly for taking time for us and for giving us a detailed insight into this so important topic. So, so much from me, so much from our side. I will give now Merve the word. Like I said, she will give us a detailed overview after this presentation, which uh, Merve will take. Uh, we will have also the opportunity where you can ask us questions about 15 minutes. There, Joshku will also join. So like I said, so much uh, from my side, from our side. Hello, Medve, Hoşgeld and Yaksamlar. Nice to see you, nice to meet you. If I forgot something, you can add something. You have the word. Yaksamlar, I thank you for inviting. And hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the importance of the Istanbul Convention for Turkey by explaining today's national law on violence against women and whether we have seen the effects of the convention in Turkey or not. Also, I want to give information about the question of whether the withdrawal decision being made in accordance with the law. I will share my screen. So, okay. Yeah. 
As many of you know, the Istanbul Convention was open for signature 10 years ago on 11 May 2011, and Turkey became the first country that signed and ratified the convention. But over the past few years, a rift has been started within some groups in government. And in the end, three months ago, the withdrawal decision was announced in the official Gazette, which was published suddenly in the middle of the night. And the Secretary General of the Council of Europe announced that the denunciation will enter into force on 1st of July 2021, which is three days from now. Firstly, uh, I think it's important to know the period in which Turkey signed the Istanbul Convention to understand today's situation, because in signing period, Turkey was in a situation like the number of femicides had increased dramatically. And Minister of Justice reported that femicides in Turkey from 2002 to 2009 increased by 1,400%. While 66 women were killed in 2002, it was 953 women in just first seven months of 2009. By 2009, uh, women's life was no longer protected by either law enforcement or the judiciary. And while Turkey was in a situation like that, actually uh, one case was the last row, the case of Naide Opus. Uh, this case was brought by Nahide Opus, who with her mother suffered years of brutal domestic violence by her husband. And despite her complaints, authorities did not adequately protect her and her mother. And ultimately Opus' mother was killed by him and Turkey was sentenced to compensation for the first time in the European Court of Human Rights' history on the grounds that it failed to protect the right to life of its citizen against domestic violence for the first time. And it was a period of the Turkish presidency of the Council of Europe. So the issue of violence against women brought onto international arena in order to handle it there. And Turkey also played a big role in the preparation of the con convention. And when the convention opened for signature, the government, the opposition, the NGOs were all agreed in full consensus to sign it. Uh, at that time, the ruling party was the AKP. And Everyone from all walks of life was content with this big step and there was much excitement, you can say. Why this was a big step and what was before the Istanbul Convention in Turkish law? Actually, there was no specific legislation on violence against women in Turkey before the Istanbul Convention. Uh, law on the protection of the family, numbered 4320, was in effect. However, as you can foresee from its name, it was very insufficient to prevent and combat violence against women as it aims to protect the family, not the women. And this law just included a few types of measures and these measures could be implemented only to a woman that officially married or exposed violence from another member of the family who lives under the same roof. Also, the definition of violence was not clear at all, so psychologic and economic violence was not accepted in many cases. Here you can see all measures that this law included, and that was all. The Istanbul Convention uh, has been ratified in Turkey under these circumstances. But before talking about the effects of it, I want to briefly explain the position of international conventions in Turkish law. The Article 90 of the Turkish Constitution states that in case that uh, international conventions on fundamental rights and freedoms, like the Istanbul Convention, conflicts with the national law, international convention will be applied. So it has been located like at the top of the Turkish legal system and it is binding for all courts and institutions. Let's see, have we seen this effectiveness in courts, in police stations or in the street? <clears throat> yeah. Um, by the reason that Turkey had to act against violence against women immediately, the law number 6284 has been enacted in 2012 with the name of Law to Protect Family and Prevent Violence Against Women without waiting for the Istanbul Convention to take effect. What does this law include? Um, 
This law is compatible with the basic principles of the Istanbul Convention, but it's quite narrower. But also, um, in drafting stage of this law, the phrase protection of the family was added to the name of the law at last minute. And the holy family <clears throat> concept appeared again. And maybe the most effective provision of this convention, definition of gender and gender equality was criticized and wasn't included in this law. <clears throat> Sorry. And in 2011, the Ministry of Women, which is established with the Beijing Declaration, was renamed as the Minister of Family. All of these have raised question marks and there were already concerns about the transmission of the Istanbul Convention, actually. But still, it was a big improvement as <clears throat> it was the first time Turkey has a law that specific law on violence against women. And it was the first step that has been taken in direction of the Istanbul Convention. And um, the Istanbul Convention had been started to show its effect uh, before the Istanbul Convention even, even came into force. But at the same time, uh, now we can say that this was the only step that has been taken. And I want to emphasize that this law is still in force today. Um, here you can see some of the provisions of 6284. The definition of violence has been expanded um, as all kinds of physical, sexual, psychological, verbal, or economical attitude and behavior, same as the convention. And the definition of the perpetrator has been expanded with changing the definition of domestic violence, same as the convention, to include all partners, not only the people whom they are officially married to. Also, uh, in its envisaged training programs in different parts of civil life, schools and media have been obliged um, to produce relevant content, but any method was not foreseen for these trainings although it was stipulated in the Istanbul Convention. Other than that, as you can see here, um, more measures compared with the previous law were included in a more detailed way, such as uh, shelters, financial, psychological, and legal support, the right to change the victim's home or workplace, the right of custody and alimony before any divorce case for violence victims, and removal of the perpetrator from the shared house. But the most important improvement of these measures is that no evidence is required to provide protective measures. All of these were regulated uh, through the Istanbul Convention, and in fact, it included just five articles when it was discussed in the Turkish parliament, but with the insistence of human NGOs, like saying that we are now a party to the Istanbul Convention, it has to be expanded, etc. It took two days shape and drafted in the direction of the Istanbul Convention. <clears throat> but, um, we all know that the laws and conventions are abstract terms, and if you don't implement these, they remain as just as a few words on paper. Were they implemented in Turkey, I want to explain this issue with four pillars, which the Istanbul Convention based on. The effectiveness of the convention is generally determined according to the implementation of these four P's, prevention, protection, prosecution, and coordinated policies. Uh, I want to give a few quick examples from Turkey of how these reflected in real life. The practices that I will talk about here are recorded in activity and monitoring reports of organizations working in the field of violence against women, especially um, one report that with the name of Shadow NGO Report of the Purple Roof Women's Shelter Association, prepared to be submitted to the Gravio Committee. Prevention. The Istanbul Convention obliged the parties to take preventive actions to eliminate the roots of the violence. And as a prime example for prevention, gender, gender equality, and gender-based violence concepts. The Istanbul Convention defines gender as 
the socially constructed roles, behaviors, and actions imposed on men and women by society and defines how these policies should be by pointing to gender equality. But the fundamental differences between the Istanbul Convention and Turkish national law begin by revealing the social causes of violence against women. Because the convention says that violence against women is gender-based and it's a manifestation of historically unequal power relations between men and women. But um, this approach was not accepted in Turkey and any reference to the concept of gender were cut out from the law at the last minute without any knowledge, without knowledge of any women's organization. And now today there is no legislation in Turkey describing gender or crime against women gender-based. This was maybe, um, this was the most important point of the Istanbul Convention and it's the first international legislation defines gender as a reason of violence. That, and experts argue that no legislation that excludes the concept of gender will not be sufficient to prevent violence against women. Also, um, in the law 6284, instead of gender equality, equality of women and men concept was used. And this is thought to be due to the fact that this is a concept that may include LGBTIQ individuals. So because um, also the sexual orientation statement of the convention in the fourth article has also never never been transposed into national law. It also shown as a reason to withdraw the convention because it is encouraging homosexuality. Also, I want to uh, explain this. It's a little thing, but I want to explain that here. Uh, because it can be understood from the English text of the convention, the domestic violence has two translations in Turkey. One is violence in the family, and the other is like violence at home. In Turkish translation of the Istanbul Convention, violence in the family is used, and this is also criticized for being opposite to the convention. Another prevention obligation, like um, the Istanbul Convention requires parties to work on eliminating gender inequality starting from a young age in society. The Ministry of Education added the gender equality courses to its 2019 and 20 academic year, but after the definition of immorality by some sections of the society, these lessons were abandoned in 24 hours. Protection. Women who are subjected to male violence need to be supported economically, legally, socially, or psychologically to ensure their safety and to build an independent life free from the cycle of violence. As an example, general support services. Um, support mechanisms are not implemented effectively in Turkey and nor not well uh, known by women. And violence prevention and monitoring centers shown in, in Turkish were established within the scope of the law, number 6284. But 62% of women who applied these centers resorted to practices that are not in favor of women. The primary reasons of malpractices were insufficient capacity, not being informed about women's rights and the mechanisms they can benefit from, sharing dissociative and false information, refusal of their requests for shelter or other support on the grounds that women could return home or get on well with the perpetrators. It was recorded that women were rejected with, a, with reasons such as uh, they have the possibility to return home or get on well with the husband or husbands could take care of them or the shelters are bad places and not suitable for children, etc. Besides, the most important economic support is to provide women to earn their own money and find safe jobs but there, there are really no effective policies on eliminating inequality and gender discrimination in the job market in Turkey. Turkey ranked at the bottom of the OECD's research on gender equality in business life. And another, 
example, one of the biggest problems with women's employment is that the need for children's nurseries to be able to work is often not met. Instead, during this period, most city nurseries were closed. Shelters, another protection issue. Um, the number of shelters is today 145 and the total capacity is 3,482 today in Turkey. And these numbers are really insufficient and there is not enough shelters. And only one governmental organization was allowed to open a shelter in Turkey, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. Also not accepting women with over 12 year old boys not accepting uh, women over 60, not allowing mobile phones in shelters, not allowing women to go out except working hours, make the victim of violence victimized for the second time. And for these reasons, some women say that shelters feel like a prison and prefer not to stay. And that causes women to continue to be exposed to violence in their homes. Persecution. According to the um, regulation on the implementation of law, law enforcement officers, civilian authorities and judges are obliged to take preventive and protective measures in time. However, um, it's seen that the necessary measures are not taken on time or at all, and women pressured not to complain in practice. The first institutions that women and children who are subjected to violence apply to are most the police stations. The misconception that domestic violence should be resolved within the family is widespread among law enforcement officers too. And according to the shadow report of the Purple Roof Women's Shelter Association, 50% um, of women who applied to law enforcement resorted to practices that are not in favor of women. Some of the malpractices faced by women were the attitudes such as prolonging the process, using accusatory and sexist expressions, intimidating by sharing deterrent information in order to prevent women to report the violence or the perpetrator. In such cases, um, they don't act in that way clearly, but choosing implicitly discouraging women to report the case by making women wait hours at the police station or start to chat unofficially and saying uh, such no legal remedies effective in violence cases, the legal mechanisms are tiring, so better not to report, shelters are not proper places for good women, etc. again. Also, it is really frequently seen in Turkey that women are held responsible for the violence in many steps of the prosecution process with accusations such as disobedience to their husbands or provocation. Also, women face reconciliation proposals frequently by the prosecutors, police officers or lawyers appointed under legal aid. And when the law enforcement agencies refuse to take action, the crimes are not conveyed to the prosecutor, hence no proceedings can be initiated. And another example, discounted reduced sentences. As well as femicides, uh, the reductions made in sentences also cause public reaction in Turkey. Crimes against women perpetrated by men are not duly and justly decided on, were let off, or in some cases allowed to pass with impunity. The most typical examples of this are the automatic implementation of the good conduct time without further investigation and the unjust provocation in a sexist way favoring men, which proves to be far from its legal description. Men get reduced sentences by saying such as she was seeing someone else, she insulted me, or I regret it, etc. There are unjust provocation and good behavior reductions in the Turkish penal code, but yeah, yeah, this can be used for some cases, but the murder of Satija Kaçmaz had his sentence reduced because of 
excessive love to the extent of passion. And Emin Akgül's murderer, Levent Akgül, said that male voice was coming from the house of his wife, who has a restraint measure decision. And he said, I lost myself at that moment. And after this defense, his sentence was reduced. Ayşe Tuba Arslan filed a complaint against Yalçın Özalpay 23 times. And in the end, she was killed by him and a petition she wrote to the prosecutor was, was found in her back. That reads, will you see me when I die? And the decision of this case was made two days ago and murder had unjust provocation reduction. Um, among the prisoners released due to the pandemic uh, were those who had been convicted of violence against women. According to the Istanbul Convention, in such cases, the state has the obligation to inform the victim in advance of the situation and give an opportunity to take action accordingly, but victims did not have any information about that. Coordinated policies. Um, Grevio, which is the independent body responsible for <clears throat> monitoring the implementation of the Istanbul Convention, has published its report on Turkey in 2018. And <clears throat> it is stated that, excuse me, I think, and Grevio uh, stated that there is a need to develop <clears throat> both laws institutions and practices in Turkey's legislation that will cover the whole of the convention to bridge the current gap in policymaking in Turkey. And Gravio further submitted that uh, sufficient measures did not adapt to meet the needs of women belonging to certain ethnic groups, such as Kurdish women, women living in rural areas, women with disabilities, children, lesbian women, and migrant or refugee women. And Article 7 of the Istanbul Convention as an important example, um, comprehensive and coordinated policies was required, but the Minister of Women, which was established with Beijing Declaration, was renamed as the Minister of Family in 2011. The Divorce Commission established, and in the same year, it published a report that suggested a huge backlash in women's and children's rights. I want to give one example from this report. Um, among these suggestions were the compulsory enforcement of some alternative dispute resolution methods like mediation and negotiation in cases of domestic violence and closed sessions in courts for cases relating to family law for protection of the privacy of the family. Another insane suggestion from this report was about Article 103 of the Turkish Penal Code, which regulates the crimes related to the sexual abuse of children. The Commission also proposed, proposed those convicted to be able to benefit from probation, provided they have an unproblematic and, unsuc and successful marriage for five years to the children whom they are abused, whom they abuse or raped. And this proposal received an important social reaction. The government had to withdraw this motion in response to this reaction. For the adequate implementation of integrated policies, measures and programs, sufficient financial resources should be provided. But the budget of the Minister of Family and Social Services, which is determined as the institution that will provide coordination on the implementation of convention, is in the sixth place compared to the other ministries with a share of 4% in the total budget of 2017. And not only for public authorities, but also civil society organizations received limited funding and were often dependent on time-bound funding projects of limited scope. Thus, legal work continues on voluntarily and personal base. And other examples of national legislation, stalking. Um, the Istanbul Convention lists various types of violence from stalking to forced marriage and states that all these crimes should be defined and punished in domestic law. 
However, despite the insistence of women's organizations and lawyers for years, stalking is not defined as a crime in Turkish Penal Code, although it is included in the Law 6284. Professor Freda Ajar, who participated in the participate preparation of the convention and also a member of Gravio, says that we see that most of the cases that end with femicide begin with stalking. And forced abortion has been defined as a crime in Turkish Penal Code. But the real issue is women's inability to access the right to have a healthy abortion. In practice, women cannot, ma cannot make use of their abortion right even within the legal period. And it has been observed that many hospitals decline to give the service of abortions without any reason. And there is no regulation has been made in the health legislation regarding this issue. Here you can see the report of Kadir Has University on prohibition of abortion. And only nine out of 183 public hospitals conduct abortion operations within the 10 weeks legal period. Now also, I want to give another example, religious marriages in Turkey. Um, religious marriage replaces marriage for a part of society, although it's culturally accepted. Uh, but although it is culturally accepted as marriage, it means women have no rights in such in, a, in case of a divorce. And also it paves the way for child marriages as it tolerates the marriage of people who are not able to marry in a legal way. Until 2050, those who had a religious marriage before the official marriage and who had done this process were imposed punishment in accordance with the Turkish Penal Code. But this article was cancelled by the Constitutional Court of Turkey in um, 2015. Thus, having a religion marry, marriage without an official one is not defined as a crime any longer. And another example from Turkish Penal Code. Um, Turkey, the, the Istanbul Convention states that violence against women, um, violence against not only the official wives, but also ex and existing partners should be deemed aggravating circumstances. But in the Turkish Penal Code, it is only accepted in case of deliberate killing and malicious wounding of the official wife. And that means such crimes against ex-wives or partners are not deemed aggravating circumstances. And here is the conclusion of all these examples. The only year that femicides decreased was the year the Istanbul Convention was signed. 3,284 women has been killed from 2008 to 2020. Yep. If the Istanbul Convention had been implemented for 10 years with its real mechanisms, we wouldn't be talking about these things right now. But um, the government claims that Violence against women increased after the implementation of the Istanbul Convention, but this can only be explained by the fact that women find strength with the Istanbul Convention, which is one of the goals of the Convention. Withdrawal process. Um, you may be tired, so I don't want to give more technical details, but if you have questions, we can talk in Q&A section. But now, um, I will briefly explain that the presidential decision on the withdrawal is clearly contrary to the Turkish constitution of Turkey. According to the Turkish, Turkish constitution, an international convention cannot be terminated with a presidential decree. Unless a law is passed by parliament, the Istanbul Convention is still legally in effect in Turkey, yes. But the state claims to have withdrawn. Um, it's said that around 220 organizations <clears throat> have filed lawsuits, and we also have filed, filed a nullity case to the Council of the States regarding this. 
like many other organizations. Uh, and today there is an important agenda uh, regarding this in Turkey. The presidency sent its defense to these cases in the Council of State and stated that these lawsuits do not have a legal basis and the decision to withdraw is within the power of the president. We strongly oppose the decision to withdraw from the convention since we don't want women to be imprisoned in the concept of family and to be made more vulnerable to violence. The withdrawal means the femicides that is currently happening will continue and the perpetrators will find the strength to take it further. So here is the answer to the question we asked in the beginning. Is the national law sufficient? No, but it can be still effective in many ways if implemented. The answer to what is sufficient uh, according to today's conditions is the Istanbul Convention as it is the most comprehensive legislation on violence against women. Thank you. So Merve, take a deep breath. Thank you for this time. Thank you so much. At this point, I would like to thank you again, Merve. Thank you for this. Thank you very much for this informative, impressive and detailed presentation. As I already said, it was so good. Now take a breath, <laughs> drink something. And really, I'm very surprised there were so much information where I was, you saw it uh, in my eyes, I was shocked on one side. On the other side also, um, how could I explain it? Um, surprised about facts and information where I really thought, wow, I didn't know that. And this shows again how much or how important the Istanbul Convention is and how much, um, or I would much more say that the majority of the society has a lack of information. And yes, you can see the impacts. Wow. Thank you. At this point, uh, now I'm speaking again also to our lovely viewers. Um, like I already said in the beginning, you have, of course, the opportunity to write and ask questions. And also um, already, like I said in the beginning, uh, Dr. Doctor, we say in English, uh, Josh Gucelik, um, a political scientist. Hello, is now joining to us. She will also um, will bring her time and her lovely presence uh, to answer some questions from you. At this point, if I'm speaking a lot, Dr. Josh Kuchelik, um, she is, like I said, a political scientist and also in our um, lectures about women rights, she will hold uh, a lecture about femicides in Turkey on the 2nd of July, coming Friday at this point. I want to give you the information and also she will also deal with the question and how far um, the femicides in Turkey have a relationship between feminization of poverty and dom domestic violence in Turkey. Yes. Welcome, Josko. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I'm here just to uh, support Merve right now because she knows the details of the convention uh, much better uh, compared to me. Uh, yes, and in Friday I will uh, give a lecture on the broader context within which women are uh, being vulnerable in Turkey uh, within the household, how this turns into an increase in domestic violence. And you, for now, you are welcome to raise your questions on uh, Istanbul Convention and on uh, Merve's very, I think, insightful and informative pre uh, presentation. Thank you. So we wait some seconds and to our views again, 
don't be shy. You're allowed to ask. <laughs> you have the opportunity. It's a safe space. Just ask. Yeah, we are waiting for your questions. <laughs> seems like Mary told everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like I already said, it was so detailed and yes, it was wow. But I think the people are just waiting. So maybe I wait, I wait, but I think someone is writing something. Mm -hmm. I watch now the comment section on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a very, very interesting question. Now I'm asking it to our lawyer and also political scientist but also as a woman who's living in Turkey, a very special question came now. They are asking, what is the intention, for example, from Turkish women who supported the uh, withdrawal of the Istanbul Convention? Why does other women support this? How can you explain this? Um. I can give, a, give an example here in a press released in November 2018 um, and the Council of Europe state that uh, despite its clearly stated aims, several religious and ultra conservative groups have been spreading the false narratives about the Istanbul Convention and um, it stated that the convention does not seek to impose a certain lifestyle or interfere with personal organization or private life. Uh, instead, it seeks only to prevent violence against women and domestic violence. But um, the convention is certainly not about ending sexual differences between and women and men. Um, however, there is an approach in the society uh, with some wrong information. And nowhere does the convention ever imply that women and men are sh or should be the same and that the convention does not seek to regulate family life and or family structures is neither contains a definition of family nor does it promote promote a particular type of family settings but uh, yeah this is an example for that maybe one of these reasons yeah so thank you Merve. this sounds very informative and i could also I can also follow your thinkings. So as I can see, there is a question from Sonuch, Sonichka. I hope I <laughs> pronounce it right. First of all, she says, thank you so much for this informative presentation. And her question is, what will happen if the Council of State gives a negative decision? Or what is expected next? Mm -hmm. Uh, this it's a question about um, the legal system. So, Joshko, if you want, I can explain that technically. Okay. Um, if the Council of State rejects our application, and this is quite possible after today, um, as I mentioned, uh, an explanation um, had been made by the presidentiality, uh, we will apply to the Constitutional Court as a next step, but we don't think that the refusal def decision of the Council of State will be overturned by the Constitutional Court. So it seems very unlikely. In such a case, we will apply to the European Court of Human Rights. Joshko, would you add something to this question? Actually, I want to add something to the uh, previous question instead, mm -hmm. because as my read told that this is technical uh, law, uh, legal process that I'm not um, that familiar with. 
Uh, but the reason why some women support uh, this is directly related to the discourse used by the government to promote withdrawal from um, the uh, convention. They kind of like uh, presented the convention as an enemy, which uh, mm -hmm. constitutes a threat to the traditional family structure in Turkey. And uh, women, this is quite scary, actually. I will try to explain it on Friday as well, especially for poor segments of the uh, society, women, uh, family uh, constitutes kind of, a, especially in, in economic terms, uh, it constitutes kind of a um, security, uh, secure position for women, in especially for the conservative uh, segments of the society, low income segments of the society, etc. And despite experiencing that violence, they don't, uh, they don't want to like tend to um, risk uh, the comfort zone uh, in that sense. But still, I have to acknowledge that. Uh, even women uh, who support the government, who support the AKP, who have been uh, voting for the uh, Erdogan, for the AKP or for uh, Erdogan, uh, does not support, do not support this decision from withdrawal. Uh, also, a uh, variety of segments in the society, which is not limited to feminist groups, which is not limited to oppositional uh, organizations, etc. Even uh, the big capital groups uh, supported the campaign to protect, to uh, continue with the convention. So I think it's not that widespread, but women who still want to um, uh, support the uh, withdrawal are under the uh, impact of this discourse used by the government as a uh, convention, as a threat to the traditional feminist structure. Yeah, uh, it's also seven seven percent that women uh, that all, in all society that wants to withdraw just seven percent. Just, and actually, just hopefully. <laughs> yes, actually, women have been used as a tool of politics for twenty years in Turkey. Politics is carried out through women's policies. But so, still, on the other hand, yes, maybe, uh, but I wouldn't uh, say that they are two because the most effective opposition to the existing governments, existing power relations today are uh, coming from women and from LGBTQ uh, plus uh, communities. So thank you, ladies, for this special answer. Um, I don't want to interrupt you, but as I can see, we have also men in our live chat. It's getting interesting, uh, who also uh, wrote uh, a question, a comment. Uh, Ozan is asking, what if the application is rejected by the court? Do you think it will be rejected or what will happen? By the court? Uh, actually, we answered this question. Mm -hmm. But I mean, especially, is there something well, you would I add? can I can add these things that um, it's it's not a problem for just Turkey and Turkish women. It's a um, it's a human rights problem that can cause European Union or Council of Europe conventions to become ineffective if countries live arbitrarily. Like if uh, we are rejected it can create a domino effect in Turkey, that's our concern. So um, the rules, the sub substantive rules have, been um, have never been tested at the level of the Council of Europe simply because it, this is a first. And I think now then is the time for the members of the Council of Europe and all the organs of it to assess under general international law um, to what rules apply to withdrawal from human rights treaties of the Council of Europe. Maybe I can say that. At this point, Merve, I really like this answer that this case is not just a Turkish case or just in case in Turkey or something which just includes Turkish women. I like the um, narrative with the domino effect you can see um, Poland is also discussing about it or other um, countries where you have a 
uh, have politics with traditional patriarchal uh, right-wing movements can also join. And this is also scaring. And really, I like the point, it's not just a women case or is something which affects uh, women in Turkey. It's something which affects everybody. At this point, this is also a very, um, I would say maybe personal or emotional question to me uh, from my side, at least I'm also a woman. I'm also a woman with a migrant background, my grandparents, my parents were children from um, guest workers, so-called Gurbetje Ailes, and we are also very um, connected to Turkey also, we're watching to it. So um, as I can see, we are also coming now to the end of this discussion. Is there something which, what you, Marve, Joshko, want to say to the world, to the women, and as I said, it's not just a thing which happens in Turkey, it affects everybody. And I mean, the feminist struggle is an international thing. It's a human right thing. So you have the word, I give you the space. Joshko, <laughs> uh, do you want to start? <laughs> Okay, I want to say that um, uh, what Merve said was very significant. This is not a problem specific to Turkey, not just because there are some uh, other uh, means of oppression in other countries. It is also because uh, patriarchy is quite universal. It is not uh, specific to Islamic countries. It's not specific to the countries of the global south. It's not specific to the Eastern countries. For example, recently we have been witnessing a ca the case of Britney Spears, right? Uh, she is not from a lower class family. She is not uh, in a conservative traditional country, etc. It's quite universal. Uh, patriarchy is everywhere. It is not like residuum of former relationships uh, from the past. And uh, what happens uh, the, in, as long as uh, oppression to women increases in a particular geography within the world, it will directly affect other parts, other geographies of the world. So yes, this is a, a universal and international issue. So the struggle should be solved. <laughs> yeah, I can repeat that now. Uh, this is really important to for the members of all um, international organizations and courts and all um, defenders of human rights to assess under international law and uh, and international conventions to uh, to make new regulations. Uh, on on countries' withdrawal decisions to say stop to this, to not make um, European Union or Council of Europe conventions to become ineffective for the other countries and also for Turkey. So, like I already said, we could discuss the whole evening through the night and Yes, also the others are writing me now. Sad the time is. We are all, oh, we are also over the time. We could speak the whole night. At this case, Marve, Shoshko, I want to say again, thank you. Chok chok teşekkürler. Thank you so much for your time.